I'm waiting for a clear day to bring speaker number two out so that I can give it the final coats of finish. So it'll join speaker number one, which is already done. Uh, and then I can put the drivers in both speakers at the same time and finish the project finally. Uh, but today, since it's raining and I can't do that, I thought I would bring this thing out. This is uh, one of two speakers that I made for my workshop about 13 years ago. And there are a couple of interesting things about this. The first is that it's active. It's an active three-way. And the interesting about thing about that, because that's pretty common these days, is it's all homemade. The... Um, this is the back panel from the other one that I started taking apart just to show this. Uh, these are LM3886, three of them, one for the woofer, one for the tweeter, one for the mid-range. Also on these boards are crossovers. So you have one for the woofer, you have one for the tweeter or mid-range, one for the tweeter. And they have a, a pot, you know, a potentiometer so that you can adjust the volume on each one. Now, one thing I didn't do when I built these, because it was just for my workshop and they sounded okay. Like I adjusted it by ear, basically. Uh, I didn't measure them. So I should have done that at the time because I discovered a small problem, but they sounded okay. And certainly good enough for my workshop. So I ran the first sweep after setting everything up here. I've got the microphone a meter away from the speaker and I ran it for a sweep and you can see that there's a dip in the response around 3K. And I knew exactly what that was when I saw it. I said that tweeter is out of phase with the mid range. So I took the tweeter out, uh, reversed the wiring, put it back in, ran the sweep again. And now you can see it's better. If anything, that tweeter is a little hot. But like I say, workshop, you know, loud volume, you want, you know, as much as you can. And I really wasn't noticing it. Sound good. So right about now, you're probably saying, well, that's his problem. He has cloth ears. I mean, it's no wonder <laughs> that he can't hear the fraction when he can't detect that hole at 3K. Now, the other thing I want to talk about on these is the tweeter. And it's... Um, it's kind of interesting and, and it kind of ties in with the diffraction horn flare video because it is a tweeter with a horn flare built in. It's a Polk audio. And you can see in the response that it dives down at around, I don't know, around 18K. And we saw a very similar thing on my horn flare where it was rolling off up around 17K. Now this one has a face cap on it. And I was thinking that I could, because I don't think I'm going to be using these tweeters again. I may, but I, I can always put the face cap back. I was going to cut it off and measure it again and see if that makes a difference. That made more of a difference than I thought it would. I've got a hole now at 14K and that's probably deeper than the one I had at 3K when the tweeter was reversed and it was this little piece of plastic right over the cone that made all the difference. You can see that it dips down at around 14K and then it springs back up after that and it peaks up actually quite a bit higher. This did a lot of correction right there. So I'm thinking the same thing um, could work with my horn if I experiment with the shape. And of course I can take cues from this right here and see how it works out. Now, the other thing that I can do here is I can take the front off of this tweeter so that it's not horn loaded anymore and measure it again. Oh no, oh no, oh shoot. I never took the faceplate off this before, and I certainly didn't expect that the wires, the lead wires that go to the voice coil, 
it would be glued to the back of it. Actually, they were probably glued to the front and then they put this on, they just screwed it in place and it stuck, All right? So when I pulled it off, I broke the wires, but I was able to repair them and run the sweep again. And you can see the results of that. And you can see why they added a horn to this tweeter. What the horn did was it raised the efficiency of this tweeter from around, it looks like maybe 3K right up to around 16K. And then when they added the phase cap, that straightened out that problem of it peaking up around 17K. So they took a tweeter that had a pretty strong peak in the high end and they added a horn and a phase cap and they fixed it so that it turns out to have a pretty good response in the end. Before I wrap this one up, I wanna double back on diffraction again, just briefly and point out a couple things. First of all, when I did those measurements, um, I ran the sweep, you saw the raw response on the screen and I quickly smoothed that. But if you look at the response before I smooth it, that's the response, like that's what the microphone is getting at that distance. And that was like 24 inches away from that tweeter. And what that response includes are other reflections from things that are near the speaker. And you can see that there's quite a variation there and the smoothing and the gating doesn't do anything to the tweeter. It just works with what you're seeing on the screen. So those, you know, up and down peaks and valleys are still all there. And you seriously believe that you're gonna be able to hear that little wiggle that we saw that was caused by the edge diffraction of the tweeter? I don't think so. And to go a little bit further with that, it's kind of ironic that people that will accept, you know, a lot of room reflection and say it's actually beneficial would have a problem with that minute amount of edge diffraction. I know with my cloth ears, I can't hear a diffraction, but I can certainly hear those early reflections from the walls in an untreated room.